In this video I'll be making some angled and tapered legs for some concrete tabletops. This is a commission for a local barber shop, Courage Noble, which is here in Norwich in the UK. And this is the third project out of three I worked on for them following the recent bay window bench seat window display units and a fitted alcove shelf, both of which I have videos about and you'll find links to those in the description box below. I'll be using 18mm birch plywood again to make the legs, so I went back to my local timber yard to buy another sheet and I had them cut it down into smaller, more manageable sized pieces. The clients wanted the legs to be angled and tapered, but as they'd be supporting some heavy concrete tabletops, they'd also need to be strong. So I used SketchUp to design what I would make, and here's what I came up with. The first job was to rip the plywood into strips that were 54mm in width. And I chose 54mm because that's what three pieces of the 18mm plywood laminated together will also measure. So once all of the rip cuts were made, you'll see here that these pieces will form six 54mm square leg blanks. I used wood glue to laminate them together. I also fired in a couple of brad nails just to hold the pieces in position so that they wouldn't move around when clamping pressure gets applied and I made sure to fire the nails on one side of the legs only as I'll be cutting a taper into these legs later and I don't want to cut through the brad nails. Then I used my parallel clamps to clamp all of the pieces together at the same time. After a couple of hours I could clean off the glue squeeze out with a knife blade. I managed to time this just right so that the glue peeled off really cleanly and easily. I also used my new knife blade scraper which I made in a recent video and I'll include a link to that in the description box below if you're interested in checking it out. Next I could start shaping the legs. The angle I used in my drawing was 10 degrees so I set my mitre saw to that angle and then cut one end of each leg. Next I need to measure up my legs for length and I'm going to take all of my measurements from the 10 degree angle that I've just cut and I'm going to use a speed square referencing from that 10 degree angle so that I can use my tape measure straight and now I can mark up that length. Now I can use my bevel gaze to take that 10 degree angle from the top of the leg and then I can line the bevel gauge up to the mark I just made strike a line. Now I know that that line will be parallel to the first cut and it'll be 725 millimeters away which will be the height of the legs. Now I can line up my mitre saw blade to cut on that line and I can set up a stop block to make sure that all of my legs are cut to a consistent length. I'm going to be using my tapering jig to cut the tapers to each leg. This is going to allow me to make repeatable and accurate cuts at the table saw. You can buy these on Amazon, I'll include a link below in the description box if you're interested. This one's made of aluminium, it'd be pretty easy to make your own out of wood if you wanted to, but it wasn't particularly expensive so I decided just to buy one. To set the jig to the cut angle that I wanted, I used a technique which is shown in a YouTube video by Woodworkers Guild of America, and I'll link to that below too. Once the jig is set up, it's just a case of running it against the table saw fence to make the cuts. The table saw blade left a few burn marks on the work pieces, so I used my belt sander to clean up the two plywood end grain faces of the legs using a 120 grit belt. I filled the brad nail holes with some wood filler and then I did the finish sanding to each leg using my random orbit sander. And I also used this to ease over the sharp edges to prevent any chance of splintering and also make them feel nicer to the touch. With the legs done I turned my attention to marking up the shape of the leg mounts. I wanted 30mm of material around each leg so that there was plenty of space for screws to be added later. 
I marked up the waist and also the areas that would need to be cut at a 10 degree angle to match the angle of the legs. And then I could cut them all to size. Next, with all of the pieces held flush, I taped them all together so that I can drill a clearance hole. I couldn't get quite enough reach to get all of the way through at the drill press though, so I used my drill to finish off the hole. This clearance hole will give me a place to start making the cuts using my jigsaw, but before I could do that I needed to mark around each leg onto the mounting blocks. Here you can see I also drilled a second clearance hole in each piece. That's just to make things go quicker when I make the straight cuts with the jigsaw, one on each side. Then it was time to do something I've never done before and that was to change the angle of my jigsaw. I changed it from 90 degrees to 80 to cut the 10 degree parts. The jigsaw obviously isn't known for its use in joinery and it isn't known for its accuracy either but using this was the best way that I could come up with to make these cuts. After making the cut to one side of each piece, I could then tilt the fence the opposite way and finish off the cuts. And then I did a dry fit of one of the legs to see how accurate my cuts were. Well, I don't think I'm going to win any joinery awards with this one, but it works. Here I'm marking up to drill pilot holes for the screws that will later secure the legs to the underside of the tabletops. And I decided to drill three holes in each corner of the block, so there'll be 12 screws in total for each mount to provide as much strength as possible. What I'm thinking is that I can use these uh, 12 screw holes to secure the leg and the leg mount to the underside of the table and then I can add some 60 millimeter screws in like so to secure the leg. After cleaning up the blocks a little at the belt sander I could then start gluing the legs in and I decided to use epoxy for that as it would do a better job at filling any gaps when compared with wood glue. I had planned to try using some polyurethane glue by Everbuild which is also meant to be a great gap filling adhesive but I had ordered some and it didn't arrive on time and I wanted to get the project finished. After adding all of the legs and making sure that they were properly seated inside the mounts I added more epoxy to fill any gaps at the top. Once the epoxy had set I could then add the screws through the blocks and into the legs on all four sides. The joints are pretty tight on most of the legs. Unfortunately, they're not all as tight as this one. This is probably one of the worst ones. Uh, you can see here that basically what I've done is I put some masking tape on both faces and then I poured some extra epoxy into the cracks. And then when it cured, I went around everything with a knife just to clean up the joints and make them look a bit tidier. They're not perfect, but they should be nice and strong and that's the important thing. Now I've got all of the legs stood upside down and I'm going to apply the finish. I had hoped to do this outside, but it's raining today. So here's where I learned that using my new sprayer inside the workshop like this was not the best of ideas due to the amount of overspray which basically coated every surface in my workshop with fine varnish dust. Once dry, after denibbing the finish with 400 grit, I resorted back to painting the varnish on instead. One thing I forgot to do that I really should have done earlier was to ease over the edges of the bottom of the legs just to help minimise any risk of the grain tearing out. So I eased over the bottom edges with some 100 grit sandpaper and then I sprayed on some acrylic finish. When the time came to install the legs it was just a case of drilling some pilot holes and adding some 40mm screws to fix the leg mounts to the underside of the concrete tabletop which was made from 25mm thick MDF. I didn't use any glue here just in case the tables ever need to be disassembled or moved around. 
The concrete tabletops weren't made by me, they were actually made by the clients themselves and I think they were made from some 25mm MDF covered in reinforced concrete and you can see from this picture how they look from underneath. You can also see here there's a batten which we fitted to the wall and the back of the smaller table rests on that while the front of the table rests on two legs. The only work that I did for the concrete tabletops was just to apply some water-based varnish just to help seal the concrete and that also gave it a darker colour which I think looked pretty nice when they were finished. The second of the two tables was really quite long, it was about 2.4 metres in length and that one couldn't be mounted via a batten to the wall and that's because the wall was going to have a rug mounted on it which the table needed to sit in front of. And because that table was so long, even though the concrete was reinforced with steel and had a frame and bracing made from some pretty thick MDF, there was still a bit of flex in the centre of the tabletop. So I was actually also asked to make one additional straight leg, which you can see in this photo here, to support the middle of the table. I didn't bother filming that one as, aside from it being straight rather than angled and tapered, it was pretty much the same as the others. That one was just made from two pieces of 18mm birch ply laminated together rather than three, so basically it was 36mm square. I'm really pleased with how the legs turned out, I think they work well and they look good and perhaps most importantly they are good and strong. If you're interested in seeing more photos of the barbershop fit out make sure you follow me on Facebook and Instagram and I'll be posting some more photos once the shop opens its doors to the public and all of the final fittings and decorations are complete. I hope you enjoyed this video if you'd like to help support the channel plus get early access to my videos free project cut lists and plans, exclusive content and a name credit at the end of my videos, you can do so via Patreon and there'll be a link to that in the description box below. Thank you for watching.